Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to week 13 of Raw. Yay, I guess. Anyway, main event for Raw, quickly announced it. It's going to be anonymous as AJ Styles, your new Dodi champion, if you, if you did not watch the sealed fate pay-per-view. He did defeat Dodi champion Bob Lashley, and he well, well, he defeated former Dodi champion Bob Lashley. He issues an open challenge tonight in the main event of Raw to any random wrestler from Raw in the back. So that shall be good, but anyway, kick things off here tonight. Sheamus goes 1-1 against Tyson Kidd. Pretty interesting dynamic dynamic between these two as they've been have multiple one on one matches. By multiple I probably mean like two or three. Um perhaps two. Um so yeah. I believe Sheamus has won both of them. So shall see if Tyson Kidd can get lucky with the third matchup. Lucky lucky third matchup for him. Perhaps nope, but Sheamus not gonna let that happen. Well at least not here tonight. Me taking down the young Tyson Kidd. Missing the bro kick and luckily enough for Tyson Kidd just able to dodge the brogue kick by Sheamus. <coughs> I still am struggling through being sick again, so yeah, that's great. Again. Alright, Sheamus simply sent back Tyson Kidd back to the ring, but now all that just a little tiny um, pocket of breathing space, the little tiny gap of, well, at least just. Just a tiny pause for him. Tyson Kidd can now pick up a victory here. Can he? Scoop a robot. No, we're only a two count, though. Again, Sheamus angry with that. Sheamus almost... Well, he knew for a second there. He mostly could have been pinned. And now the triangle choke. And Tyson Kidd gets a victory. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyson Kidd defeats Sheamus. Third time is a charm, like I said, for this kid. Now, Sheamus... Oh, off the ropes. Oh, come on. Sheamus again... Nailing him with that bicycle kick. He likes to call it the brogue kick. Third one. A fourth. Sheamus. Just at the next door. Those are fifth. A sixth. A seventh. An eighth. A ninth. And a tenth. And an eleventh. Four good measure. Eleven brogue kicks in a row by Sheamus. Sheamus walking out the ring. Feel, must be feeling very proud of himself, perhaps. Definitely has to be feeling proud of himself. That's the only way that could describe that. Tyson Kidd, I didn't have all that much time to really celebrate. But let us say Tyson Kidd does get a victory against Sheamus here tonight. To kick things off Raw, we're quickly going into the second matchup of the night. Anyway, Big Cass, Mishra, and Masala, they've been having a whole lot of one-to-one matches lately. They take on two-fourths of the Brood, Christian and Vampiro, both Edge and um, Gangrel, the two main Men of the brood, I guess. They did lose their raw tag team championships to the Hardy Boys, which is why one half of the Hardy Boys, um, Jeff Hardy, he is going to take on Kane later on tonight. Of course, they should both on taking Kane to Brothers of Destruction. Um, they did win a number one contest match against Bree Sango in the last couple episodes of Raw. I can't remember if it was the go home show or not, but I was to say they did win a tag number one contest matchup. In one of the past episodes of Raw. So they'll take on the Hardy Boys whenever the time comes for the next pay-per-view. Which, I'm not going to spoil it too soon. Because we're going to have spoiled SmackDown's next pay-per-view. Which is too far the next pay-per-view we do. And which is going to happen after we do every other single episode of Humor's Mode. Including Raw. Which is this one. Then East Story. Then SmackDown. Then Superstars. <coughs> then we do SmackDown's pay-per-view. And then that we do the whole thing. All over again, but this time for East Story's pay review due to the lineup. And then Raw, they're gonna have a gap because SmackDown has the next pay review after that. So, yeah, SmackDown again, a whole lot of couple pay reviews in due to them having the biggest increased amount of time for pay per views. Well, at least for like storyline to progress. And now Christian taking down Mishar Masawa. We shall see. This gonna be an interesting dynamic between the young up and coming. Big cast Colin Cassidy, along with the amazing veteran that is Mish Masawa. And so, if I had Masawa defeat Cass in past matches, I believe Masawa has defeated Cass in all of them. And if not, one well, Cass has only won one of the past three matches. Remember, in the live event, the monthly live events, we did the second one, which was yesterday. And good thing we did it in time because that was the last day of, of January, in which way we could have done it. So that was a good thing. We did it. And so, um, that was... It was only a four-match card show, but the, the 
Raw's main event. And by Raw's main event, Raw's only matchup in that night, besides the triple threat, champion versus champion versus champion one, Raw's matchup was a fail for a number one tennis match for the Incarnate Championship that involved Sami Zayn, Silas Young, Big Cass, and your new number one contender for the Incarnate Championship, Alex Shelley's tag team partner, Chris Saban. So, tag team partner versus tag team partner for those Raw tag team championships. And I see right there, there goes Christian from the Hurt Crown from Big Cass. We still need to change that moveset. Because Big Cass still currently has the Hurt Crown in his moveset. And when he jumps off top rope, his striking attack off top rope will be a drop kick. And so, we, we need to change that. The elbow drop one will be accurate as his off the top rope squash. But... But not as the off top of strike with the drop kick. Not that great. Let's see right there. Trying to grab Christian. Not able to. Christian trying to bring up a good fight here. And there we go. German suplex into a victory roll. But not fully able to fully do it as the cast does fall off the ring. So, ladies and gentlemen, we shall see. If Christian Vampiro is to win this, then they definitely prove that they are not really all that weak for the brood, which is why they've been going by themselves while edging. Gangrel, Gangrel, of course, the leader of the Brood. He's been, he's handpicked Edge as the best member, besides Gangrel himself, of course. Christian's been proven as the weakest link, but Vampiro has equally gotten as much losses, probably just because Christian's gotten more, because he's gotten more matches, and because he came before Vampiro in the Sumerus mode. So, I guess that's that whole dynamic. This is week 13 of Raw, and so only 13 episodes of Raw. Raw. We've gone. We've gone by a couple of start ends. Not to mention, we've gone by a whole lot of champions so far. And by a whole lot, I mean only three. But still, this is week 13. So that will equal what? 4, 8, 12. This will equal like it'll be a third month. If you want to keep it regular, real calendar wise, it'll be like a third month. So three champions in three months. Eh. I guess it just depends on the storyline and where our storylines are going. For Rob specifically, it's not all that accurate. I feel like a champion should have held the title longer. <laughs> I'm seeing bunk, but yeah, that's that's that. Anyway, so next up, Randy Orton. He's gonna take on the Paul Cruz. That's gonna be your matchup after this. JBL. He's gonna take on Sami Zayn, cause Zayn he needs some momentum. He looks to get from John Bradshaw Layfield, and we shall see if JBL is to win that one. Definitely gets Jibble up in the ranks. Fifth matchup, Jeff Hardy takes on Kane, and usually those five matches will be uh, for Raw, but nope, we have now added in a sixth matchup. The sixth matchup will now be your main event, as we do have AJ Styles with the non-title open challenge. We shall see how that works out, and ladies and gentlemen, we need to go into commercial break, and yes, we're having the commercial breaks just so we can sh shrink down a little bit some matches, I guess. Anyway, now Vampiro catching Big Cass. As we are now back from commercial break, um, not as much. See, that was a quick commercial break because there are no commercial breaks. I just did this to simply trim down the veil because reason purposes. Anyway, now Mr. Masawa getting tagged inside the ring, and now we got Masawa and Vampiro. Cass needs to get back on the ring apron, and now what a close night from the veteran Mr. Haru Masawa, and now, well, Vampiro tagging in Christian. Now, now the whole entire matchup has now changed. In this match, Masawa looking for some sort of game momentum here. Waiting for Vampiro to leave. Never mind, Vampiro back inside the ring. Doesn't even matter one bit. Anyway, now, Christian. Going to perhaps go off the ropes. He's thinking about it, but no, does not fully do it. He does not fully do it. And so that's definitely going to cost him later on. I see right there, double unhook suplex from Masawa to Vampiro. Now Masawa has them up. Snap, suplex. Nicely done. On part of Mishar Masawa, and now Walt almost getting bad by suplexed by Vampiro. That wasn't going to fully help him out, though. Not fully, if that was to happen. Now Masawa going to have to try and tag him cast, try to get out of this corner. He is in the enemy's line of target. He is in the enemy's corner, and the enemy, of course, being Vampiro and, and Christian. Now, Vampiro and Big Cass, they seem to have a little bit of an altercation. You saw that in the bottom half of your screen. But now, Masawa's still struggling to get out of this damn corner. Masawa, he, he needs to try take down one of them and then just quickly try to leave. 
Now try to take out both, because then once you take down one, the other one's going to quickly get back up. That's just the whole thing with the brood. How powerful they are as a unit. Vampiro, Christian, Edge, and Gangrel, well, of course, Edge and Gangrel, of course, split up from Vampiro and Christian. But imagine they're having just like full brood on attack. That definitely is a scary thought. <coughs> As I slowly die in the background because this cough is completely just so bad. Although I'm able to like do well with it, still is annoying. Still is very annoying. Sawa now has him, well, almost had him. But now Vampiro. Getting her around for his troubles, never mind. Mr. Harmasawa able to find friends in near places. And by that, I just mean able to just find a special opportunity here. But he's, in, he's still in the corner. The veteran not acting all that smart here. He's going to have to tag in the rookie Big Cass. He's going to have to tag in the rookie Colin Cassidy, whether if he likes it or not. Now, now, Colin, he's just, well, Big Cass trying to do something here. He's on top rope. He was on top rope. Colin Cassidy, Big Cass, Colin, whatever you like. Um, but Sawa, I don't think he wants to tag into Big Cass here. Now this is when the whole Heat gets back to play. And no Heat is our pre-show, and we're going to give a recap of that later on, as we did stop doing full Heat, Velocity, and Metal shows. After we only did like two or three of them each, so yeah. <coughs> That's that. Sawa now. Locked inside that triangle choke. Not gonna fully work for Vampiro, but it's able to just work just enough to wear him down. Her Karana. Masawa again back inside the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, quick commercial break again because this match is taking forever. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. I see right there. Masawa having just somewhat control over Vampiro now again with the control of that half leg crab. The half leg crab locked in on big cast. Keeping Christian away. Wait, what? He's not going to try to break up the pin? No, I'm not going to here. Luckily enough, Vampiro now going to get the full three count against Masawa. And now, what's what's Cass doing? Cass, he's walking away. He's on the outside. He's leaving to the ramp. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Christian. He'll have to catch on from the distraction and a three count from the small package. Masawa, perhaps momentarily looking. Our camera angles didn't catch it all that much. Well, at least in the beginning, but Masawa perhaps looking as Cass just left. Christian getting a victory for the brood. Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, I guess. Masawa again completely. Well, I wouldn't say screwed, but Masawa just did not expect that. Well, that's what he gets for not tagging in Big Cass all that much, I guess, when he was in trouble. But, of course, the heat between them still fires rampant. But, Misawa, surprising. you think that Cass will be the one to not tag in Misawa. But, Misawa perhaps just didn't think about it. Just had our thoughts about that we currently can't think of. But, anyway, very big Cass type move right there. Just simply walk away on the same So, there goes now power slam away. But what what do I mean by power slam away? I just mean the power slam by Randy Orton. This is gonna be an interesting contest here. Two very much contrasting styles. The high flying ability of Paul Cruz that Randy Orton's been up against multiple times and against the brawler type ability of Randy Orton. See right there. That was like a four fifty leg drop. Beautifully made by Apollo Cruz. Somewhat getting Orton's back there. Orton not feeling all that much. And now has him up, nailing him down with that nice go through Bulldog, I guess. And now Armando strikes. What a kick right to the back. Trying to get an easy victory there, but now Apollo Cruz with those ropes. Orton getting a little bit frustrated early on here. Going for two counts. Well, I don't know how I say it. Well, he pinned him twice. Bottom line, he didn't even bother moving for those two times. So, yeah. Now Apollo. On top of those ropes again, the 450 leg drop. That move is so beautiful. Anyway, now has him up the one hook tiger suplex right there to Randy Orton. And now nails that beautiful standing moves up. Paul Cruz's moves that you gotta admit is something that you will love to watch. But only a one count. Wow. Sometimes when it does. Well, n nice counter from Cruz. Uh, I was about to say, well, when you don't do pre-moves, this can sometimes be more effective, but these pre-moves from Apollo Cruz being effective here, but that's not pretty about that DET. 
the vintage Orin Randy Orton, I just call it, although people don't usually announce it as that anymore. Orton perhaps went for an RKO there. Waiting for Power Cruise to get up now. Has him. Off the ropes he goes. And Power Slam once again. Randy Orton immediately stunning back up. Springing back up. And now trying to go for the RKO. Power Cruise slipped out of it. He's seen that move before. Now Body Slam as his head just momentarily left from his neck and shoulders. Because I don't know why. It's like every time when I carry up in the Power Cruise in this game. It always does that. So I guess. Need like that. And now well small package from Apollo Cruz. Trying to get one there, no. The referee took a while. It was only like a one count there. Perhaps Styles was a rope break. Now Orton, multiple lariats. A third one right there. A fourth. And now perhaps a fifth. Nope. Trying to go for the RKO. Paul saw that one. But now Orton counts with a and drop. Right to Apollo Cruz. So Cruz not doing so well. Lariat once again. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to go to commercial break. And let's say Jimmy, we are indeed back now. Power Cruz upper hand here. See that power bomb sticks right into the cover. One, two, and no. Almost had it there. And now, or off the ropes goes to Paolo. Thought I was thinking of another power slam there, but just another. Another brutal looking lariat. And now, Orin looking for the RKO right there. Power Cruz having these RKO scouted. Trying to go for it again. Orin getting very desperate here. That back suplex into a victory row. Power Cruz will almost get, um, yeah, almost getting the victory for that. But only a two count. Nate Jones, this match has been great. I've been enjoying it personally. And now, well, Cruz, Sunset Flip, getting countered here. Orton, almost having it. Very, very close two count for both men. German suplex, but Randy Orton's two count slightly closer with that Sunset Flip. Definitely did catch the rookie Paul Cruz from surprise there. But now, Paolo, can have to think of something more devastating here. And that somersault leg drop definitely could do the trick. But not going for a pin. Standing. Moonsault, once again. Cruz, tying to the crowd, trying to get them riled up here. But now that's the, that's the rookie mistake. Don't ever do it to when your opponent is, well, not fully down. And still has some left in the tank, as Orin did there. And now Paul Cruz is the one who's struggling in stand instead of Orin. August, that one mistake, taunting, playing to the crowd. And now Orin, stomping away, stomping multiple stomps. How much can you stop? Well, RKO counter by Paul Cruz. I was about to say some sort of stomp joke. That was supposed to be a tongue twister, but no, never mind, I forgot. Just a neat looking backbreaker from Orton. After that knee drop now. And now Orton Lariat to Apollo once again, nailing him down. Another Lariat. Randy Orton spamming a whole lot of those in this matchup. Another one. Non stop. And a, just another one. A fifth. And, well, misses the sixth one. Paul Cruz stumbling down, but now another backbreaker. Randy Orton, proving why he's the Viper, proving why he's the Apex Predator. He may no longer be a legend killer, but probably still has some down inside. But this time, he is the rookie killer. Paul Cruz struggling in this matchup now. Well, at least now in this part of the matchup. As Randy Orton is on complete and utterly fire here. He's on complete and utter. He's in complete and utter control. Multiple more knee drops. Has him up. Well, he... Trying to put him up. Paul Cruz fighting. DAT Vintage Orin. Well, that was going to wait for Paul to get up. And another Vintage Orin. Multiple of those devastating DTs And just the front shoulder. I mean, the front elbow drop. I'm at. Taunting to the crowd. But this time, Paul Cruz is trying to get back up. Trying to learn off the mistake that he did. Trying to put it on the veteran Randy Orin. But now, it doesn't matter. Because here we go. RKO. It only takes one three count. Good night, Apollo Cruz. Thanks for coming to face off against Randy Orton. Orton wins this great matchup. And now, ladies and gentlemen, moving on. After just a hell of a matchup between Randy Orton and Apollo Cruz, we now move on to your backflashes from the two matches earlier on in the night in Heat. As well, Bobby Lashley, Brian Cage, this was to kick off Heat. Just see who will win between these two. Now, see right here, Brian Cage just simply choking the living lights out of Bobby Lashley. Lashley countering. Crown and pump. Both, both of these men switching up the dynamic. And then shortly after that, Cage. Yeah, we get the victory. Because it just simply choked him out. Choked Bobby Lashley out. Lashley immediately got out of it, but he did. Um, he did tap. 
You mean the guy out of it, which is why must, some of you guys must struggle to see. And Silence Young, well, he's going to make MVP tap out with the angle lock immediately as soon as he applied it. And so that was your main event for Heat. Those were two matches from early on the night from Heat where we had Silas Young defeat MVP with that ankle lock. Brian Cage defeat Bobby Lashley with that chokehold. Bobby Lashley, of course, the former WWE champion. Lost the title to H. Styles at the Sealed Fate pay view and now losing to a rookie, Brian Cage. And so that's how that went. Still got a couple. By a couple, I mean a handful of matches. And by that, I just really mean not much because three down, three more to go. JBL, Sami Zayn. JBL, of course, possesses that devastating and close line. He caused the close line from hell. Sami Zayn, the devastating halluva kick that he almost tried and do there, which is a big boot, a running big boot, right to the face. No one does it better than him. And now, well, JBL trying to scurry away, trying to find something to do here. Sami Zayn not going to have none of it. Nailing that fisherman suplex. Off the ropes, nails that moonsault. Has JBL up, snap, suplex. And that was Sami Zayn looking for an opportunity here just for a bigger move, perhaps. And that well, almost went for the little kick. And now JBL just oh, taking him down with that lariat. It's close to a close on help, but no, is once he sends his opponents off the ropes with an Irish whip, he runs towards his opponents with full frontal force. And he does that close line from hell, which he's been trying to do multiple times in his match, but it's more devastating when he runs to his opponents after he Irish whips them. And so him trying to do a regular clothesline or him trying to run to his opponents themselves and trying to do a clothesline or him. Well, there we go. The clothesline from hell we were talking about. And now Sami Zayn's ticking out at two. Zayn no selling his finisher whatsoever. JBL in deep trouble. And Sami Zayn in the opposite. He's not in deep trouble. And now JBL trying to catch Zayn. Nailing him down with that lariat once again. And now Sami Zayn can't sign a sleep hold. JBL. Master of the whole. Stock market up on Wall Street. Definitely. Definitely a millionaire. And now Sami Zayn sees the opportunity. Hello, a kick right to JBL. Right in the mouth of the millionaire. Kicking the teeth straight down JBL's throat. Sami Zayn scurrying away. Wise move there by Sami. Saw an opportunity that, well, the highly experienced veteran JBL just did not notice. Had his back turned to Sami Zayn. For just a couple seconds, then once he turned around, didn't have enough time to react. Sami Zayn nails his finisher, the halluva kick, which is such a simple maneuver. He could do it out of nowhere, which makes it so damn effective. And just like that, Sami Zayn picks up a victory against JBL. Well, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, once he has match plays out, join us after the commercial break. Jeff Hardy, Kane, it's right now. Welcome back from the commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. And now Jeff nails the bulldog right to Kane to bring us back from the commercial break. And now, Swanton Bomb, perhaps? No, waiting for Kane to get back up. He's not going to Swanton just yet. Waiting for him. Spin and heel kick once again. Saw that before the commercial break even started. So, there you go. But now Kane trying to look for something here. Choke slam from hell out of nowhere. Jeff Hardy no selling that. Another one. And the third choke slam. Choke slam mania here. By Kane, trying to do anything he can to just easily pin Jeff Hardy. He could try and pin Jeff there, but Kane, the high experience, he, the high experience that he possesses, well, so does Kane. I mean, so does Jeff Hardy. But now, well, ladies and gentlemen, I can't even get be able to actually fully have an, a proper sentence for the proper timing of this video. You know why? Because such quick, fast-paced action here. But now Kane, trying to have Jeff Hardy. Both these men by the announce table. The announce table was already been broken. They had a family. But they don't care about the announcing his family. And now, just a beautiful reverse suplex from Kane. Devastating, as it, as it is beautiful. And another one, Jeff Hardy had a little bit of a softer landing onto that chair. And now, now spin heel kick right to Kane. The dynamic of those spin heel kicks. So devastating from Jeff in this matchup. Working wonders for him. Well, Kane looking for something. Looking for a gate of opportunity. He's on count of eight here. Nine, he gets back inside the ring along with Jeff who gets back inside the ring at the count of six. Kane taunting Jeff, telling Jeff to come over there. And now, well, Jeff fell for it because Kane, I think he has a plan, chokes him onto the outside. Jeff Hardy's back of the skull bouncing off the concrete floor. But 
the Madden, as much of, of a thin Madden it is, not going to necessarily help all, all that much. Because it's very thin. So you can still feel some of that metal concrete. Well, not metal, but concrete. But now Jeff, looking for an opportunity here, not going to sell that. Definitely whooping a concussion for anyone more of the weaker type wrestlers in the back. But Jeff, definitely one who could take a whole lot. Has a whole lot of resiliency. Has a whole lot of stamina to withstand as much punishment as Kane could um, withhold. As much as Kane could just dish out. On to Jeff Hart. Multiple. Well, not multiple, but perhaps multiple. Yes, a second one. And perhaps a third. Nope, not a third big boot. After the ropes, gut wrench slam by Kane to Jeff Hardy after those two devastating big boots. Saw a big boot by Sam Zane. The Hulua kick took JBL's lights out. And now Jeff, well, thought he was going to go for something there, but no, just waiting. And now, mini tiny, mini tiny, I mean, just a mini Swanton Bomb. And now, well, the Bulldog. And, well, Jeff, just another one of those grounded Swanton Bombs, of course. Off top rope, more, more devastating. This goes for Twisted Fate. Kane saw Twisted Fate coming. You see, taking down Jeff Hardy has him. Perhaps the Tombstone Power Drive there. Jeff saw that coming. Saw so a takedown. Right to Kane. Now, Jeff on top of the ropes. Here we go. Swanton Bomb. Right on to Kane. Didn't feel nothing. It was more like the Swanton was to his legs, but still, still should have done some damage, if not more. But Kane, not feeling nothing. The Devil's favorite demon. Alive here tonight, and his name is Kane, and his brother, the Undertaker, watching on backstage along with Jeff's brother, Matt Hardy, watching on backstage. Right here, that twist of fate, and here we go, Swanton. What height? What elevation? That Jeff gone. That that has to be it. After the Hardy Boys signature twist of fate. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I did enjoy that one, but now we need to go back to the ring. AJ Styles is going to acknowledge his open challenge to any wrestler in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, your new WWE champion of the Red Raw brand here in this company is AJ Styles. I know, right? To be fair, I wasn't really shocked that I did. But I am grateful and I am thankful for all the wrestlers, as few as they were, and if not none, but definitely the millions and millions of fans that did support me along the way in that matchup and on my journey to winning this WWE Championship, as I did win it against the not-so-fan favorite Bobby Lashley at the Raw Sealed Fate pay-per-view where I defeated him in that steel cage escape to victory match thanks to that random little wheel for raw roulette that we used. But anyway, I felt like the match could have gone on way longer. Lastly, now I'm not gonna lie, for the for the period of time that the match went on, which was not all that much, but for a couple minutes it went on, I thought to myself, if I am to walk out here tonight as champion, do I glow about it, or do I become thankful? Do I become as cocky as Bobby Lashley was once he defeated CM Punk for that WWE Championship in the Triple Threat day and back all the way in Week 8? Or do I be thankful? Do I become thankful for all the fans that have supported me? Answer, yes. Because this right here is me. I am AJ Styles, and I am your new WWE Champion, and well, my first operation of business as your new said WWE Champion, I will now issue an open challenge to anyone in the back, a non-title open challenge, of course, I'm not just going to freely give away my championship if I am to lose this, but definitely, if anyone shall beat me, whoever is to answer this open non-title challenge, they definitely will get a number one contender shot in the future, so Raw Roster, what you got? Well, there goes Jim H. Styles. He's trying to change. Who's it going to be? Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, then. Got a little bit got a little bit shocked there. Was not expecting that one. Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man. At least in his mind. He debuted not too long ago. He won a trip there against Mark Merrow and Rick Rude in his debut matchup. Anyway, now Styles immediately, well, he's just going to try to spoil that 
multiple multiple shots to Ken Shamrock here, but they should have Ken Shamrock. That's a little bit surprising. Well, that bicycle kick, not surprising. And now here he has AJ Styles busted wide open. Shamrock, impressive showing from the big man. Shamrock right busting Styles open up that quick. And now, oh man, Styles, worst mistake in the matchup against a man like Ken Shamrock or against Ken Shamrock in general. And that is that Shamrock will, of course, always beat you in a grapple game and in a striking game, just like he is right now to your WWE Champion AJ Styles. Shamrock slowing down the pace a little bit occasionally, but now has Styles busted wide open after one of those strikes earlier before his whole striking game off the ropes. And now go kick into the pin. I won't be surprised if that's it, but no, the heart throws in to see if AJ Styles to kick out. Shamrock, let's talk about how how many times he went off those ropes to get all that momentum. <coughs> to get all that momentum for that one bicycle kick. Definitely smart. Styles, well, missing spill heel kick and now catches Shamrock suplex. Nice done, Shamrock not feeling that, but now turn around into a spin heel kick. A nice one by AJ Styles. Ladies and gentlemen, don't. Don't pause away this veil. And by don't pause away this veil, I mean don't leave this veil. Because we shall be back. Continuing. Styles versus Shamrock. Well, Alicia, we are back. Shamrock upper hand here on top. He's standing. Styles is not. That says wonders. And now has him up. Almost had him up. Nice count from AJ Styles, though. Your WWE champion. Definitely is not one to lose this matchup. But he did say if he is to lose this matchup to where a challenger it is. In which is Ken Shamrock. We now know that, of course. Styles, 450 on to Shamrock, though. My bad, got cut off by that beauty. That beauty of a move. Anyway, now, Ken Shamrock, is he, if he is to defeat H. Styles here tonight, definitely gets the number one contender shot in the future. And Shamrock, he came in here to his roster not too long ago, so it definitely will make our wrestlers in the back definitely, definitely angry, but... Shamrock, he's the one who's answered open challenge first, so I guess it's all fair. And now Styles, just another beautiful 450 splash. By the phenomenal one. Your champion Styles has him. Styles Clash! Not, go, not going for a pin. Realize it's going to take a little bit more. And another Styles Clash. Right to the devastating can Shamrock. Can this one be it? No! It's two. Styles is amazed. Styles momentarily not moving. Axe in the crowd, what the hell just happened? Here we go, perhaps another 450. No. Shamrock caught him. Border toss. Sticks with it. Shamrock catching Styles Mitter from that spin heel kick. Nicely done by Shamrock. Shamrock kick now a two from two exact. Styles clashes. That is impressive in itself. Now Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. Definitely a fan favorite for his matchup. Bandwagon's starting to just... Come easily to the most dangerous man alive. Bandwagons rolling in for Ken Shamrock. Definitely a fan favorite. I'm not a bad man, but if I was to bet, <coughs> I would say Ken Shamrock has to win this matchup. But definitely, H. Styles, he has the heart. He has to find soul of a champion. And so, definitely going to do his best to try to walk away here tonight with the victory. But now, Shamrock off those ropes again. We've seen this many, many times where he goes off the ropes multiple times. Well, he stopped around his tracks. Jinx now styles to stop him. What a broke kick. I shouldn't say broke kick because James is going to get angry about that. But, bicycle kick. But definitely, that is Seamus' broke kick. That is his broke kick. So, yeah, but Shamrock now. Off the ropes goes Shamrock. Never mind. Thought Styles was going to go off those ropes. Styles barely connected in the spin heel kick, but he does connect. And now Sunset Flip. Easy victory, perhaps. But nope. He wants to kick up the right to back to head of Shamrock. Styles almost got a victory once again. God met Shamrock. He's struggling a little bit now. Styles getting back up in this game. Getting back up. Trying to easily get a victory here. Not going fully because it's not going to be an easy victory. I see there, Shamrock. Bringing down Styles off the power slam. And on second power slam. Perhaps a third. Looking for a third. Well, ne <laughs> yeah, never mind. I was trying to say nice counter by Styles, but then when that happened, Ken Shamrock countered Styles' counter. So that's weird. So I had a whole tongue tie there. I'm still trying to recover from the tongue tie. So anyway, there are Styles. Ken Shamrock now simply just waving at him, taunting him, taunting AJ Styles. Snap suplex Styles almost in the almost in the ring apron. Perhaps he did hit a little bit of it. That time, Depp most definitely will have hit that. 
Styles, nice counter though. Dragon screw. Shamrock now. Waiting for Styles. Has him off the ropes. Another power slam. A third power slam. I called it. And now, oh man. Ken Shamrock's signature maneuver. That devastating ankle lock. Kurt Angle, Jack Swagger, take notice. That devastating ankle lock from Ken Shamrock almost snapping. Styles is, well, there we go. Power bomb, power slam. Shamrock. After almost snapping Styles' his ankle, hitting his finisher maneuver, his finisher maneuver, and Styles simply not going to stand for it. Styles is still in this matchup. Shamrock, he's not a happy camper, and you can tell it in the expression in his face, waiting for Styles to get back up, but Styles just crumbling down into that mat. Can Shamrock now has him? Well, almost had him. And now, well, now he has him. Uh, X Factor, Face Buster, Counter, never mind. By Styles. Styles, easy victory right here tonight. No, two count. Well, it definitely wasn't an easy victory, but with an easy move to execute, I guess. Well, at least for Styles. Definitely would have worked out for him, I bet. Shamrock has him up off the ropes. Goes Styles, and on fourth power slam. Or fifth, I already lost track count. I wasn't sure. Has him up, trying to do that power bomb. Um. Well, multiple counters there, but trying to do the power bomb, power slam. Where the hell was it again? Trying to do it again. No styles counter scuba roll up. That one almost was it. Has him missing the styles clash. Almost had it. No, never mind. Catches Shamrock off surprise. That's third styles clash in this match. Styles slowly crawled his way into the pin predicament, and he has now pinned Ken Shamrock. Hard fought victory for the current WWE champion for the phenomenal one, AJ Styles. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude this episode of Raw. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the Randy Orton and Paul Cruz matchup. I especially enjoyed this awesome main event between Ken Shamrock and AJ Styles. Shamrock answering the open challenge. While he did lose the matchup, you get, definitely got to think either way. Definitely, if he was to win the matchup, he will most likely, well, he will get a one turn shot. Most likely. Probably not, but most likely in the future. Um, he did not win this matchup, though. But he did have an impressive showing against AJ Styles. He held us all. Styles held us all more. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that will conclude this episode of Raw. Um, I quickly need to end this, and so I will, because I'm getting multiple text messages, and I'm secretly being annoyed behind the scenes, which is why this conclusion has actually taken, like, seven different takes, because people are annoying. Anyway, goodbye.